First at 5 o'clock, teens causing chaos at National Harbor, running around in large groups without masks. Visitors and business owners say that the teens are causing problems. That's right, violent problems. One restaurant owner says a teen pulled a gun on her. Well, tonight, Seven on Your Side is taking a closer look at what's being done to keep people safe. Maryland Bureau Chief Brad Bell joins us live from National Harbor with this story that's all new at 5. Brad? Yeah, you know, this is an interesting one. Early on in the pandemic, National Harbor was pretty much empty. There was no one here. It has come back to life. But what we heard from the county executive today is on some nights, as you said, it has gotten far too lively. Prince George's County Executive Angela Alsobrook says she heard about it in a call from a horrified restaurant owner. Crowds of young people descending on National Harbor, ordering food, refusing to pay, fighting. Alsobrooks went to see for herself. Sure enough, I mean, they are there by the thousands. Kids are there by the thousands. And when she uh, would try to, or the staff would try to ask for the money, um, that assaultive kind of things were happening as well. Video obtained by Seven on Your Side shows some of what she describes with groups of what appear to be teenagers gathering, sometimes fighting or running through crowds. National Harbor resident Mika Liu says she's been leaving the area on weekends when the trouble happens. There have been looting, a lot of, um, a couple of robberies, I think, and uh, fights. Yeah, and a bunch of them doing it all at one time. It's always on the weekends. Also, Brooks says she knows young people are tired of being stuck at home, and she's suggesting activities offered in parks, and she has ordered outdoor basketball hoops be reinstalled. But she's also pleading with parents to do better. Do not rent hotel rooms for groups of minors and leave them at that hotel uh, for parties and other things. Kent Digby, who runs National Harbor, says he agrees with also Brooks. Kids, when they gather, uh, they're not doing it in a safe way. Uh, and, you know, why parents would allow that or think that's a good thing is beyond me. Yeah, and so National Harbor and County Executive also Brooks really appealing to parents in this case. They want them to know what has been going on down here and to quite frankly be better parents. And if that doesn't work, then they will step up enforcement. There are a lot of police here. There are cameras everywhere. They want the young people to know that as well. Customers say the Greek deli in Northwest is a D.C. landmark and a favorite of presidents and politicians. But now the small business is asking for help as it faces tough times caused by the pandemic. ABC 7's Caroline Patrikas explains. It's been said that before you die, you must try the lemon soup at the Greek deli in the district. This is the famous lemon soup. This local and family owned Greek deli is known for its famous and authentic Greek dishes like the baklava. Oh my God. The regular days before the coronavirus, 200 pieces a day. Owner Costas Ferstieris has been running the show here every day for 31 years. I don't play games with the customers. <laughs> I don't play games. I know about 500, 700 names by, by memory. Hello, John. Hello, Mary. Hello, Tony. Hello, Nick. A local staple for everyone, including presidents, something Costas is proud of. For police of the Washington. But this D.C. institution has found themselves in danger of closing due to the coronavirus pandemic. Of course, it's not like it used to be. I do the best I can. I used to have five, six people, now I have two. Costas said there used to be a line out the door. Now it's more like a ghost town. So he put out a plea on social media, writing, I need your support more than ever. A very small family business. And they are here only five days a week. I'm here for three o'clock in the morning to have everything fresh. So I need their support. He says if there's another shutdown, they will not make it. Wow. Evan, tonight we're hearing from the standout basketball recruit who had his pick of some of the country's top programs. But instead, McCore Maker chose D.C.'s Howard University, and it has to do with his aspirations off the court. ABC 7's Annalisa Gale is here with the interview. Well, Carl Michelle McCore Maker is focused not just on the court, but also off the court. He has his eyes set on helping the environment and taking Howard's basketball program to new heights. 
For many, the decision came as a surprise. You made some headlines uh, this summer, earlier in July, a McCore maker. But for McCore maker, it just made sense. Well, how was the Division One school? I looked at the staff, the coaching staff at Howard University. Instead of picking basketball powerhouses, UCLA, Memphis, or the University of Kentucky, he decided on Howard University. On Twitter, he wrote, I need to make the HBCU movement real so that others will follow. What really broke the, the, the tie between all the schools that I, I picked was um, the social unrest and everything going on. Our lives matter just as much as yours. And this month, he posted this video in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. Do you think it's funny that people are surprised? Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of weird to me that people are surprised, but, you know, is, is their right to be surprised? It hasn't really happened. His enrollment at Howard University is already making a difference. Just creating buzz. Howard already has a name. It's just continuing to uh, put it on a different pedestal as far as the athletic one. The six foot 11 five star recruit born in Kenya and raised in Australia is also taking classes online and majoring in international business as he focuses on other goals off the court. You know, I took a trip in, uh, back in 2013 to Africa. My goal is to definitely invest into um, green solutions in Africa and, you know, from the renewable energy source side. And being in D.C. will help me connect and network with people. For now, Maker is waiting for more guidance from the NCAA on when he'll be able to compete again. You can watch my entire interview with him right now on WJLA.com. Carl? Yes. We're back now with a live picture of the Capitol wheel at National Harbor that will light up purple any minute now. That will continue every Friday in October to bring awareness to domestic violence. ABC 7's Justin Hinton is on your side now, tracking concerns that the pandemic is creating an opportunity for abuse to increase, but help is available. This PSA from the No More Foundation seems innocent at first. Just a man washing his hands as we're all doing during this pandemic. But as the camera zooms in, it's clear. He's washing his hands because he has just beaten his partner. A spokeswoman for the Prince George's County Sheriff's Office says protective orders from March to September have increased from about 6,400 in 2019 to more than 8,700 in 2020. She attributes it to rising tensions during the pandemic and people being more aware that they can get out of abusive situations. Gabby Parson with Community Crisis Services says call volume dropped at the beginning of the pandemic, likely with people stuck at home with their abusers. But now more people are reaching out. When we started to receive these calls, we started to get more reports of severe, more of severe abuse. She says they've also seen an increase in the number of men showing up seeking shelter. Usually they would have family that could support them, but they can't go and stay with their other family members because they're afraid of catching COVID as well. So it may be that. She wants everyone to know there is help. First in support through Purple Light Nights, where residents can pick up purple light bulbs at the Capitol Wheel and show their commitment to ending domestic violence. They can also reach out to community crisis services, whether by calling the hotline or using the chat function. We're successfully removing these victims from their situation. So we are able to assist them and we have been able to get them the services that they need. Providing help one person at a time. In Prince George's County, Justin Hinton, ABC 7 News. And we want you to look at your screen right now. If you or someone you know needs help escaping abuse, call this number. It is 1-800-273-TALK. The Community Crisis Services line is staffed around the clock every single day.